Hey everyone, welcome to Nadine's Dose of Inspiration. This is episode 22, right? And so I'm just excited to be able to just um, share some thoughts with you all. If this is your first time joining us, we want to say welcome. We're just a family, a community that just want to grow and develop and um, overcome and um, no longer be um, victims to what happened to us or what was done to us or where we come from or our victims of our backgrounds. We just want to be overcomers because God says that we are. So um, I'm glad that you're able to join us um, 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 today, right? Um, before what's customary for us to do is that before we get started in today's topic, um, I like to give shout outs. Now look, okay, listen, I am putting a timer in front of me <laughs> because last week I did an hour. We cannot do that. No, 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 no. I know some of you are like, it's okay. It's okay. No, that's pretty long. Right. So, um, this week I'm, I'm putting the timer right in front of me. It's not going to be at the side. It's going to be in front of me. So I, I moved my laptop over so I can have the uh, timer directly in front of me. All right. So, um, we're going to pick up with what we just started discussing last week. But before we do, I want to give a few shout outs. Um, Rahaja from Sri Lanka, Rahaja, if I'm, I'm, if I'm not saying it right, please correct me in the comment section. So that's Rahaja from Sri Lanka. Katrin from Austria. So I'm giving Katrin from Austria a shout out. Allison from Barbados, shouting you out. And Angelica from the Bronx, shouting you out, Angelica. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for the, those that are joining us for the first time and those that have been a part of this process. You know, podcast number 22, you've been along for the journey. Um, thank you for being a part of um, Nadine's Dose of Inspiration. Last week, we started a very touchy topic, um, a very sensitive topic for many people. Obviously, it's not like that for everyone, but for many people, this is a struggle. This is an ongoing struggle. Um, there are seasons that they are doing well in this area, and there are seasons that they're downright angry, they're upset, they're struggling with some hateful thoughts because of this topic and because of what's being asked of them. And they may not understand how to apply what's being asked of them. So I'm going to pick up with, um, a recap of what we discussed last week. And it's on, on the topic of forgiveness. I saw in my DM some hurt, um, people, um, um, instant messaged me, DM'd me, and some of comment sections on um, the podcast platforms as well as YouTube, and definitely saw some hurt there um, for some people. While the discussion last week was just a reminder for others, we know that this is the the, the issue of forgiveness and unforgiveness is a very deep, deep, deep topic for some people. Either way, we will all have to face the issue of forgiveness. Every single last one of us, because. We live in a world of imperfect people. Um, the minute you got here, it became imperfect because you are imperfect. I am imperfect and all of us together are imperfect. We're going to do things to each other intentionally or unintentionally that may hurt someone else. People are going to do things to us, be it intentional or unintentional that will cause hurt and pain to us as well. People will disappoint you. You will disappoint other people. You will perhaps hurt someone or someone again again, will hurt you. And we must be able to extend forgiveness because we want to be forgiven, right? We can't demand something to be extended to us when we are not willing to extend it to other people. All right. So I want to give, um, the meaning of what the meaning, the actual meaning of forgiveness. It means forgiveness, me, forgiveness is a conscious decision to release a feeling of resentment towards someone. So listen to that. A conscious decision to release a feeling of resentment toward someone. So in our part class, part, excuse me, podcast last week, we came to the conclusion. Okay. So some of you are listening through YouTube. You're watching through YouTube. Some of you are watching through, um, Spotify or, um, 
Anyway, all the other Apple podcasts and all the other different podcasts that are, that are out there, you're listening, you're tuning in whatever space you are tuning in from. If you're able to make comments in the comment section of how you've overcome, um, in this particular area or how you're walking through in this particular area or how you're stuck in this particular area, I want you to be able to comment in this section before if your, if your platform does not allow you to comment, then DM me on my Instagram. Um, that's at Nadine, a Raphael or instant mis- message me on Facebook. That is at Nadine a- a Raphael, right? Um, those are two spaces that you can, um, send me messages. You can always send it to my email, but those are best. My email is Nadine. Um, um, what is my email? Nadine Raphael at me.com. <laughs> you can send me an email there as well. Okay. So in our podcast last week, we came to the conclusion that Forgiveness doesn't mean we condone injustice or give up seeking justice. It is not an endorsement of a bad behavior. So just hold on to that. That is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness doesn't mean that what they did to you was right either. Okay. Forgiveness doesn't mean you are excusing the offense. I'm just getting free from its hold and control on my life. Okay. Forgiveness, um, though forgiveness can lead to action. It's not an action. Forgiveness is a state of mind. It is a state of being forgiveness is not a feeling or an emotion. It is a, it is a mindset. That is what forgiveness is. Now it may lead to action. It may lead to on the other side, an emotion or a feeling or whatever the case may be. So you're not feeling a certain way when you see this person or what have you, but that's not its origin. That's not what forgiveness is. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's a state in one's mind It's a state of being. And we're going to unpack that a little bit. Okay. So what forgiveness, so those are what forgiveness is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is for me, not for the person who has wronged me. I'm freeing myself from the actions of someone else. I'm becoming at peace with self. Listen to this guys. I'm becoming at peace with self in spite of what they did to me, in spite of what was said about me, in spite of what happened to me. I am really, I'm giving myself permission to have peace, to no longer allow this thing, this hurt, this resentment, this pain to infiltrate my life, take residence, take real estate in my soul, pack its bag, move in and take over my very soul. Forgiveness says I will no longer be trapped by what happened, by what was said. By what was done. I am choosing to be free. I am choosing peace. You see how this is a state of mind. Choice is a state of mind. It's a state of being, or perhaps for some is a state of becoming this thing of forgiveness. Okay. As long as we don't forgive, as long as we don't forgive, we poison ourselves. We talked about the venom last week. So if you didn't get that, you can go over to last week's podcast and listen to that episode 21, or just jump onto my Instagram or my Facebook, because I put a little, a three minute clip it on what the venom is. And I described it on my Instagram or my Facebook page. Someone has hurt me, but they are out partying, having a good time. They've moved on with their lives. It's been 10, 15, 20 years and they've moved on and I'm stuck with the venom. Forgiveness is I'm getting the venom out. Forgiveness is I'm moving on with my life. Again, it doesn't mean that I don't seek justice. It doesn't mean that I'm saying what they did was right. It only means I will no longer be imprisoned and held captive by the actions of someone else. That is way too much power for me to give someone else concerning my life. Forgiveness can, can be a one-time act for some, for others. It is a process. It is a journey. And you take that journey at your pace at what you are able to handle, not someone's expectation of what I should be able to handle. They have to, for someone that's on this journey of forgiveness on this action of what someone did or said, or what ha- what happened, the betrayal, the cheating, the lying, whatever, what was happened for some, it is a process. And what I have to do for, in some cases, I have to constantly reapply forgiveness. 
Like, I know I forgave, but something is triggering this emotion. Something is triggering this resentment. And I have to reapply forgiveness and the reapplication of forgiveness. It's okay. It's healthy. And it's a part of the journey. Forgiveness doesn't mean reconciliation. What is reconciliation? When I'm being reconciled, I'm going back to the state of the relationship before the offense. If there was a relationship there, some people, it was a stranger that offended them or, um, um, violated them. Right. So, um, this is as if there was a relationship there before, and I'm going back to the state of the relationship prior to the offense. Forgiveness does not mean that I'm going to be able to do that. Forgiveness doesn't even mean that it's even healthy for me to go back to that, that prior state, um, of the relationship. While some situations can be restored to a relationship of same status or even better than what, what it was before the offense, other relationships cannot be restored due to the level of trauma evoked upon the mind, the emotion, or even the body. If a stranger hurt you while you may forgive that person and, and release forgiveness and release that person and what they did, it may not be recommended, right? That you have a relationship with the person who harmed you or violated you. Reconciliation doesn't have to be a part of the forgiven journey. Um, as you move forward, um, forgiveness allows me to move forward, whether I have reconciliation or not. Let me just say this. Sometimes you may want reconciliation and the other person does not. That doesn't mean that you cannot extend forgiveness to them and move on because that person doesn't, does not want what you are trying to do. And we can't force reconciliation on people either, right? That is, that is also, um, that's controlling and it's not healthy for my state. They don't want this relationship. So why should I force it upon them? So forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. Um, we have to be careful that I'm not forgiving with ill motives right? I'm not saying I forgive you because I want you to say, I'm sorry too. I'm not going to say, um, I'm sorry for what I've did. Would, would you forgive me? Um, and that person, you know, whatever that per person says, no, yes, or what have you, I'm given forgiveness for me. It's not for the person. I remember in prison for some of you, you know, my story that I was, I did time in prison. And I remember there was a situation that happened. We were part of a, the, in the prison, one particular prison, there was a choir that was formed with the, with the prisoners, with the female inmates. And I was a part of that choir. Not that I could sing, <laughs> not that I could sing at all. Right. But you know, I was able to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, emphasis on the word noise. So anyway, um, I was in this choir and, um, the person that was leading the choir, the inmate, um, that was, she could sing. I mean, hands down, she could sing. And, um, the way she was, she was belittling, bel belittling people that could not, she was just speaking down to them and making them feel less than it was just not a good situation at all. So I stood up, I stood up for them like, Hey, you know, we don't need to talk to people like that. You know? Um, it's not like a, we're, we're trying out for, to be, you know, a, win an Academy award here. We're just inmates <laughs> trying to, you know, have, a um, gospel songs, sing some songs to cheer up the inmates and, 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 and help people enter into worship unto God. It's not that serious, right? We're not going out for an award or something. And, you know, but anyway, she was just coming down and beating us. So anyway, I spoke up for those that she was speaking against and belittling. And anyway, she went off on me. Like she, she read me like a newspaper. I mean, left and right from right to left and left to right up and down. And I'm sitting there like, Oh no, she didn't like, hold up, Lord, you got to help me here. So what I did, I walked out. Now that was hard for the other women that was there because you know, I was like their protector, you know, I, I, I just, I just helped them in their journey with the Lord. Anyway, I walked out, went to my, my room and, um, the Lord began to deal with me like Nadine, that's not the way you handle, um, something that you do not like something that's happening that you don't like, you know, um, there's a way, especially when other people are looking to you, there's a way that you, and you handle things that show forth honor 
right? And respect, even when a person is not respecting you, you don't have to lower yourself to their level and become their actions. Okay. So I was listening. So I was like, okay. And so the Lord was like, you need to go in there and apologize and whatever. So on my way in, I noticed that the, um, the choir practice, the rehearsal was over and I saw the person walking down the hallway towards me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I stopped her. I said, Hey, you know, um, I just want to say that my action in there was, um, you know, it, it wasn't right. And I just want to ask you for your forgiveness for what I said and, you know, for how I handled that and walked out and so forth. And she said, okay, you're forgiven. <laughs> she did one of these numbers. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was livid. I really was. So I was like, okay. And it's like, you know, the words was right there on my, like this is over 20 years ago, right? The words was right there on my tongue. And it's like the Holy Spirit was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And I was like, yes, yes. Let me just say it, Lord. And the Holy Spirit was like, you know, restrain yourself, Nadine. That is the marking of a true leader is self-control. Being able to control your tongue just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I walked away and I went in my, I was mad. I was like, oh no, Lord, you didn't let me say anything. I wanted to let, and the Lord was like, wait a minute. Why did you apologize? And I said, well, I asked her for forgiveness. I was hoping she would say, because she did wrong too. So I was hoping she would say, well, you know what? I was wrong too. Um, and ask for forgiveness as well. And, he, and God was like, well, that's not a true forgiveness. True forgiveness. There are no strings attached. You release it and you let it go regardless of the response of the person. That is not, remember, forgiveness is, is not about the person. Forgiveness is for me. So I'm not being held captive by the actions of someone else. So I was asking for forgiveness and releasing forgiveness with ill motives. I had an ulterior motive. It wasn't pure. That was the beginning of me understanding the depth of forgiveness. Let me tell you, I began to, um, when I got saved in, in, in prison, there were people that wronged me. The reason why I was there, there were people that lied and the people who lied, some of them were released before me. I was still stuck doing the time while they were out living the free world in the free world on a lie that they told, but I had to make a choice. I can either live under the control of what they did or release myself from what they did. I began to write letters of forgiveness to people. I'm going ahead of myself because I, I, I do want to talk about um, some, some, some applications that we can utilize to help free us um, with this in this area of forgiveness. By the time I was leaving prison, with this area of forgiveness, I had, you know, I, I was sentenced to five years, um, almost six years in prison. And so by the time I was leaving prison, um, I had already released people, forgiven people from my childhood to my, you know, how I got to prison, all of that stuff. And it was freeing. I was writing letters like crazy, just forgiven. I mean, it was like, you get a forgiveness, you get a forgiveness, you get it for everybody, get a forgiveness, right? Because it was freeing. It was liberating. Okay. Let me tell you how this, uh, uh, the day I was released from prison, the assistant warden called me to his office. He called me by my last name over the intercom and I was to go to his office and I went to his office and, um, he said, you're now free. This is what he said to me, right? After these years of me being in prison, he said, cause that day I was immediate released. And he said, you are now free. And I said, no. And I called him by his name. I said, I've been free. I've been walking in for um, freedom. I chose to be free. You see, because the cell did not represent my freedom. I was free on the inside before a physical building released me. The greatest freedom you can give yourself is the freedom of your mind is the freedom of your emotion. <laughs> when we are not free, it, 
it 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 um it confines us. It makes the imprisonment, not just the physical imprisonment, but the spiritual imprisonment, the emotional imprisonment, the mental imprisonment. It, it, it entangles that stuff into our soul that we are, we are so embittered and filled with resentment and filled with anger and filled with hate. And I came across many hundreds of women in prison where that was their situation. Some of them, I was able to help them walk through a process of um, forgiveness. Some of them, even by the time I left, they were still in bondage to unforgiveness. The scripture says, who the son sets free is free indeed. That's not something that we just quote. That is a position of our minds that impact our behavior that has a whole effect on our very lives. Now I didn't deny the reality of my situation and the feelings that it caused me initially. When I came into relationship with Christ, I had to cry out to him regarding what was done to me, regarding the injustice that was done to me, regarding this matter of forgiveness. He came and I love that about the Lord. He joined me in the pain. He met me in my pain. He didn't say, okay, Nadine, I'll help you. But first you got to get out of the pain. Mm -mm. He entered the pain with me and walked me through the pain. And each time a matter of forgiveness came up, he helped me to see it for what it was so that I can be an overcomer. There's power in saying I'm hurt. I'm in pain. I was wrong. And I invite God into that, into that space, or I invite others to join me in that space. It doesn't mean our feelings change right away, but it's okay to say that I'm hurting and I need help in processing how I feel. Forgiveness is first mental and then it impacts how we feel. So it's something that I get to in the state of my mind that then works out in my emotions and in my feelings that comes into alignment. A friend of mine reached out to me from high school just today of what she's walking through. And God gave me a word for her in the moment that I was speaking to her about, you know, I was reading what she was, she was going through, what she's going through. And I began to just um, speak to her. God, you know, allowed me just to speak into that space. And as I was sharing some thoughts with her, God, God just gave me a download in my heart, deep within me. And it was on Psalm 23. And in that Psalm, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. And it was just to let her know that in her pain, God is with her. In her hurt, God is with her. In her feelings of um, betrayal or um, um, someone has wronged me in great way, God is with her. But here's the key. God not only meets me in the valley. He walks me through it. See, I'm not meant to stay in the valley. I'm meant to go through what I'm going through. I'm meant to get to the other side. I'm meant, I'm meant to get through the valley. But here's what God was saying to her. It's not just that he meets me in the valley and then walks me through the valley. He also leads me and helps me to sit at the table that he has set before me. What is that table? Some people only focus on the table of provision. What is yes is provision, but not just physical provision. It's mental provision. It's, it's freedom. It's peace. It's joy. It's provision of restoration, provision of healing, provision of contentment. And the Lord is saying that he is offering this dear friend of mine that, that spread at the table. He will do the same for you and I. You know, sometimes, you know, it's not that we feel God, right? Um, or let me just say it. We can't, we can't see God right with our physical eyes. I, I, yeah, I stand corrected. We can't see God with our physical eyes, but the wind, you can't see it, but you can feel it when it blows. No matter what season you are in winter, spring, summer, fall, you can feel the wind when it blows, no matter what season you are in, in this area of forgiveness and the area of your life, you can feel the blow of God, the wind of God, that he's with me in this valley. He is with me, but not to leave me in the valley. He's with me to lead me through the valley and lead me to the table that he has set before me. 
a table of peace. I need my peace back. I need joy again. I need contentment because this whole issue of unforgiveness is robbing me of the life that God intends for me to have. I can't change it, what has happened, but I can live in spite of what has happened. And I live because God's afford me. He affords living, abundant living to me, regardless of what has happened. I'm not living in this space focusing on the lack, the lack of closure, the lack of the unsuccessful relationship, the lack of the unsuccessful marriage and what I hoped it would be and it didn't become. I, I can't live focusing on my lack because it's robbing me from participating in the provision at the table. And what God has set before me at the table. But if I keep focusing on my lack, I won't see what's around me that God is inviting me to participate into. So some practical things that I have done and I believe that people have done as well just to help me to walk through this thing of forgiveness. Again, forgiveness starts with our mind. And then it works into the other areas of our lives. Some people need to do something literal as an illustration for their heart to receive it. So if you can't face the person physically due to trauma, um, due to um, they're in prison, um, it's not possible because they're dead, or it's just not healthy for you to be in their, in their space in front of them, right? You could write a letter of forgiveness. You could send it to them. Or you can write a letter and just tear it up and let it go. You can write and let the wind take it, right? Throw it out at sea or, okay, we don't want to pollute. No, okay. <laughs> you can write a letter and just burn it. Have it just burn. Let the flames just, just crinkle that thing. And for it's a visual thing that this thing is no longer going to have a hold upon my life. You can write a letter, throw it out, put it in the, in the incinerator. Write a letter, put it in the garbage and let it just go out. So you're just saying garbage out, garbage out of my life so that the offense is released and the grasp that it has held onto you for so long is no longer having this grasp and this grip on your life. Don't spend time living in what you cannot change or undo. Focus on what's ahead and what's in front of you. Again, some people will need God's help and intervention to experience and walk through forgiveness because of the layer of trauma and the depth of pain that's in the soul and that's in the person's soul. And some people, you, you, we just need therapy to help us or a counselor or a coach to help us walk through what we're going through, walk through our thoughts. I mean, God can use all those things to help us on this journey of healing and being totally set free. Okay. It's okay. Just start somewhere. <laughs> Like I said, in prison, I wrote letters and I just released people through, um, the letters because, um, I did, I no longer wanted to be bound by the things that people did or, um, controlled by what they said. Um, I was taking, um, control of my narrative and not allowing the, the pain inflicted by others to control my life. You can also recite forgiveness to someone, um, so that you can release it. So it may not be the person that has hurt you, but you have someone just stand in proxy and you're saying it to that person as if you were saying it to the person who actually wronged you. And you're just, what you're doing, you're just releasing it out. And it's a, it's a safe place. It's a person that is able to receive it, is that is able to give you support, give you encouragement. And just, um, you're just, you're just, um, um, releasing it. Uh, you're just getting it out of you, getting it into an airspace. And that person is just standing in proxy as if it was the person who has wronged you and make sure that person is a healthy person, is a strong person, a person of wisdom, spiritual mother, spiritual father, a pastor, whomever, your therapist, whomever it may be. All right. As an act of, again, it's just a, a help, a, a, um, a way of, of illustration to help you walk through this matter of forgiveness. Another thing is if you're feeling great pain from something that is unhealed, an anxiety, um, um, and it triggers depression or it just triggers anxiety or it triggers these unhealthy emotions. What you may want to do in those moments where you're feeling it and you're in a moment or a space and that person or whatever is happening, uh, or they're there around you. Um, what they tell you to do is do long breathings, right? It helps to slow the mind down and, 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 um, 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 draw in your emotions so that it's, it's, it's firm and stable. 
okay? And you're not having these outbursts. So you, you breathe in long and you push it out slow, right? And you just do that a couple of times until you just bring yourself down and you're in a calm state of mind. You're taking control and not being controlled. You're taking control and not being controlled. Okay, another thing you can do is speak God's truths in those moments. Truth of love, truth of healing, truth of forgiveness, truth of peace, truth of joy, truth of contentment. I'm focusing on what God's what God has given unto me and not what was done to me. I'm focusing on what God has in the space that God has invited me into and not in a space of, um, what happened to me in this, in the past. I'm being empowered in those moments when I speak God's truths over that situation or over my life concerning that situation, I'm speaking God's truth, which is now, um, empowering me to be an overcomer. That's what you're doing. You're practicing overcoming. You overcome from within before you overcome, um, what happens without on the outside. Okay. You are becoming in those instances more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Okay. So an example of that, right? If I'm struggling, okay. Not feeling love or, or I'm struggling with this issue of love because of what was done to me. A truth that I can recite is I do not have the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love power and a sound mind because I have love. It equates to power and that power gives me a sound mind, a stable mind, a fortified mind, which is built on the bedrock of love. Nothing. What love? God's love. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing about the wrong that was done to me, about the injustice that was done to me. Nothing can separate me, the scripture says, from the love of God through Christ Jesus. Okay, now healing. I need healing, Lord. Okay, the scripture says, by his stripes I am healed. So I'm, re I'm reciting that. It also says that God has given me beauty for ashes, the ashes of my situation, the ashes of my circumstance. God is saying, give me that and I will give you beauty. He also says in Isaiah 61 that I will give you, he will give us a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. This thing is just, it's, it's, it's too much for my shoulder to carry. It's too weighty, God. And God says, I, I don't expect you to carry it. Let me take it from you and give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, the scripture says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest from what? Rest from the issue. Rest from that past circumstance. Rest from what they did and what they said. Rest from that broken relationship. Rest from that broken marriage. Rest, rest fully, mind, body, soul, and spirit. He says, come to me, bring that thing to me, and I will give you rest for your soul. He says, cast your cares upon me. My shoulders are big enough, God says. Why to cast your cares upon him? Because he said, because I care for you. Found in first Peter chapter five, verse three or three, verse five, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. Forgiveness, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. You know, the scripture says, if you want forgiveness, you have to release forgiveness, not as a one time act. Again, it's a journey, right? And he understands he comes in the journey with you to lead you through the journey. He's not beating you over the head because you can't forgive. You can't forgive. No, no. He walks you through tenderly, patiently through this thing of forgiveness. Peace. Jesus said, my peace, I give to you. My peace, I leave with you. Peace concerning that circumstance. He says, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm not only just going to give it to you. I'm going to leave it with you. It's not like the world's peace. The world's peace come and go. And it's temporary. And it's based on frivolous things. God's peace is eternal. It doesn't come. In. He says, I leave it with you. His peace is a perfect peace. Um, um, it's a lasting peace. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, I want to say this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts your mind and your minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians six through seven. And then joy, this thing is robbing me of my joy. 
The scripture says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. In spite of what has happened, I can still have joy. It's God who gives us strength to get through what we're going through, to get through these issues that you're dealing with, the weight of the issues, the circumstances, the people who have wronged you. God's joy will give you strength. And joy is greater than happiness. Why? Because happiness is based on what's happening. So it's temporary. Joy is based upon God. It's, it's within me. It, I can have joy regardless of what's going on around me. I can still have joy on the inside of me, right? That is the joy that comes from the Lord. And then contentment. God wants us to have contentment regardless of what has happened. Life is filled with ups and downs. And I have learned, we have to learn to take them as they come. I cannot, you cannot, I cannot be controlled of, uh, by the things that I can't control. Then then my life is up and down. My life becomes a yo-yo. I can only control me and how I perceive what's happening around me and even to me. Philippians 4, 11, Paul says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, it's to be content in it. Not to the point that I don't desire and, and, and I don't, don't desire to be better and seek, be seek better, but I've learned that no matter what, I can still be better. I can still remain content. I can still remain peace. I can still have peace. I can still have joy. I can still have love. I can be content in these things. These things come from above and not on the circumstances that are around me. And even though I'm content in these things, my contentment leads me to the next that God has for me. It doesn't mean I just stay stuck, just, just remaining where I am. Mm -mm. I get peace in my contentment from God. And then he leads me through, through, um, 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 the journey of peace in peace to the next that he has for me. You know, it's str so strange that Philippians, the book of Philippians, Paul, the apostle Paul wrote that book. That book is, is, is the most peace filled books in the new Testament in one book the most peace filled book. And it was all written by a man while he's serving time in prison. While he's in prison, he's penning Philippians, one of the most peace filled books of the entire Bible. He was content. And, and because he was content and not allowing the situations ar around him to rob him of what God wanted to do in his life, he was able to be used of God to impact lives, even to our lives to this very day that we even read, excuse me, um, um, Philippians and are encouraged by the words that he wrote while he was in pr prison. You know, um, embitterment and unforgiveness can rob us from opportunities that are around us, that God wants to still use us in those opportunities, purposes that you have around you, that God wants to invite you into and help you to discover. But when we're embittered and, um, 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 so caught up in unforgiveness and hate and anger, we lose the opportunities to make an impact on the world around us. And even people around us, the purpose of life, we're here to learn and contribute to the betterment of human existence. We can find peace with life, not because life is always good, but because God is not because life is perfect, but because I'm understanding life better and I'm finding my purpose in it, even in the imperfections. When I'm embittered and hate filled due to unforgiveness, I'm robbed of this wonderful opportunity to steward my purpose and my very existence for being here. A few closing thoughts. If someone keeps hurting you after discussions have been had and understandings received, you must rethink that relationship. If you feel you cannot live without a toxic person who keeps hurting you, then you must go on a journey of self love and look into perhaps maybe you have some codependency ways. <laughs> I want us to think of how we can reframe our experiences, negative experiences so that we can live freely and release people so that we can walk in true forgiveness for ourselves, right? That we extend to others, but it's for us. Um, we've reframed the experience. Um, that means to close relationships, close relationships or relationships in general will have pain 
um, attached to it because, um, people are imperfect and we will hurt one another, but we must assess the actions done against us. Are these actions reconcilable enough for me to remain in the relationship? Or is it telling me the actions that this person has committed against me? Is it telling me that while I do forgive them, I deserve better. And it's time for me to cut the strings and move forward. Another thing is we do not want to allow ourselves to continue to be hurt. And what we need to do in those set cases is that um, settings is that we must set some appropriate boundaries in our lives. It's okay to structure things in a way to minimize our risk of continuously being hurt by the same person over and over again. Sometimes it means I have to physically remove myself from this person, right? Um, um, which may send a per message to that person that I will no longer tolerate the pain that you continue to inflict upon me. Um, in toxic abusive, sometimes it's not a physical pain, but it's a verbal pain because it's abusive communication that's coming from the person to you. And it's okay. Oh, that's okay. We aren't going to continue is what we say to them. We aren't go. I'm not going to continue this conversation until it's being, um, 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 had in a respectful manner. So I'm going to remove myself from this conversation until it can be had in a respectful manner. I'm showing that person how I want to be treated. I'm demonstrating for them how I would like to be treated. And then I got to make sure that I'm doing the same towards them. These are physical boundaries or communication boundaries that protects my mental, my emotional, emotional, and my physical health. Take also take full responsibility for how you feel. This is dependent upon your own thinking. Acknowledge that it's your thoughts and beliefs that is causing your feelings. This is important because if I'm always blaming someone else for how I feel, I'm giving them too much power in my life. They are going to do what they're going to do, but I control my feelings and my response. No one else can do that for me, but me. That's why it's important that we take responsibility for how we are feeling. You're not wrong for how you feel, but you need to take responsibility for it. Responsibility. The words has two words, response and ability, ability um, to respond to something, right? The ability to respond to something. It's not about fault or blame, but the ability to respond. That's what empowers you into walking out, overcoming how I'm responding. I'm taking control of myself so that you are not controlling me. I am controlling my emotions, my, um, response to you. So it's the ability to respond under, under, under my control and not you controlling how I'm feeling, how I'm, um, responding. Um, this is also, um, a good, um, opportunity for us to practice, um, just being, what's the word I'm looking for? Forthright, you know, concerning ourselves. I I'm thinking about how I'm feeling. And if I don't like how I'm feeling, I'm asking myself, not anyone else, what do I do about that, Nadine? I don't like this feeling that I'm having. So I'm having a self-talk about myself. Okay, why am I allowing this person to um, control or to dictate how I'm feeling? That's too much power that I'm relinquishing to, to, an to a, a human being who's flawed at that, right? So I am taking responsibility of how I'm feeling, of my emotions and my feelings. Work on renewing or releasing the relationship. Recently, someone said to me about their relationship, I just don't want things to go back to the way they were, Pastor Nadine. I don't want things to go back to the way they were. Yes, that implies that this person wants to create something new. They wanted to stay in the relationship, but not at the level, at the place of where it was. They wanted it to be healthy, something that looked different than what it was before. This takes intentionality and effort from both parties. Yes. But sometimes that other party isn't there yet. And you want to salvage that relationship. So you have to start practicing this healthy, healthy communication, healthy boundaries, even though they're not there yet, you are modeling that behavior 
for them, in front of them. And this is not only healthy for you, but it's also giving them a point of reference that they can emulate or they can see how it's done so that they can be healthy themselves. For you to be able to do that though, when that person isn't ready yet, that takes a whole lot of self-love. And if you do not have self-love, then you need to go on a journey of how do I love myself? right? How do I practice love? How do I pour on love on myself? Am I worthy of love? And I think that sometimes people stay in relationship because they believe that poor relationship, toxic relationships, because they believe they can't get better or they believe sad to say they don't deserve better. This is why self love is so important. And when I can love myself better, I teach others how to love me. I show them how by boundaries, the boundaries that I set up in my life is showing them how I love myself and how they can engage in a, in a sp- in my space, in relationship with me, but within these boundaries, because I'm not going to go to th- with the, um, hateful speech and, um, in t- intoxicating behavior. I'm just not because I, I'm worth, I deserve better. I deserve better. They do too, but they just have to get to the place where they realize that they deserve better um, than the actions that they're spewing out. When we remember what forgiveness is not, it's easier to take steps towards forgiveness. When I realize that it doesn't mean I'm condoning a behavior, it doesn't mean that I don't seek justice, it doesn't mean that I'm saying what they did was, was, was right or anything like that. No, forgiveness is for me that I'm releasing the toxicity. I'm getting the venom out. That's what forgiveness is. Your venom will no longer um, 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 overtake my life. Kill off every healthy, the healthiness that I have going on inside of me. You're killing off the healthy spaces within me. You are intoxicating my soul. I'm allowing you to intoxicate, intoxicate my soul by not releasing you. Your forgiveness is I'm releasing that person. I'm releasing vengeance. I'm releasing all of that resentment. I'm releasing all of that. Why? So that I am no longer a prisoner by the actions of someone else. Your actions will no longer control my life. I'm free. Listen, guys, this is liberating. It is empowering. And this is how we walk out being more than a conqueror. I am no longer a victim. I will no longer take a victim mindset. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. And I'm giving myself permission to be an overcomer. I hope somebody's getting this. This stuff is good. I'm, I'm just listening to myself and I'm just saying, I hope someone is getting this because I've met way too many people that are still in bondage due to this issue of unforgiveness. Forgiveness frees me personally and grants me the power in my personal walk to walk out the development that God is trying to invoke into my life. Self-development, right? Um, that he's trying to um, um, work out in my life that he's trying to, um, implement in my life so I can grow so that I can stretch so that I can be all that he intended me to be so that I can be whole so that I can be healed so that I can be free so that I can be fully redeemed mind, body, soul, and spirit. That is the space that God invites us into. And when we release forgiveness, we're stepping further into that space. I pray this was a blessing to you. I am praying for you in this area because I know some people are, are struggling deeply. Um, and it's going to take time. And I hope you get help. I hope um, this helps you. Yes, I hope so. But I hope if it needs further than that, it's going to mean, mean further, more than just a, a one episode of a, of a podcast. But um, you may need a therapist, like I said, a counselor, a pastor, a coach. A, a, a spiritual mother, a spiritual father, a wise person that could just journey with you in this area. I love you all. And I, at my heart's desire is that we can be free so that we can move forward in the life God intends for each and every one of us to have. Some of you, there's so much more than where you are. And God's invitation is being extended toward you even right now. Step out from where you are and step into the more that God has for you. Amen.
Amen. God bless you. Father, I thank you that your heart for every one of us is healing. I pray that we would um, open our hearts wide enough to allow your healing salve to allow your healing balm to go into the spaces in our lives that are still broken, that are still tattered, that are um, fragmented, but you desire to restore and to make it whole. I pray even over these um, weeks and, and months and perhaps years, we will take that journey and be totally free and live the life, God. Experience the life that you desire every single last one of us to experience. Happy, um, uh, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah, whatever it is that you celebrate, I pray that you just enjoy the holidays with your family. If you're not celebrating anything, that's okay too. Um, just, um, enjoy the life that God has, um, um presented to you that God has offers to you, no matter what season we're in, he offers us more. And I pray that you step into that. God bless you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.